In this video, I'm going to explore methods of space heating for houses, garages, greenhouses, commercial buildings, etc. without actually burning anything. Fire has revolutionized human evolution and from the time of cavemen huddled around a campfire to stay warm to current natural gas and propane furnaces that heat most of our houses and commercial properties, indoor space heating is primarily done via fire. Dating back thousands of years, fireplaces and then wood stoves, gas heaters, oil burners and a multitude of other devices have been designed to burn stuff to keep us and our buildings warm. But what if you don't want a fire? What if Greta finally got to you and you want to heat your structure without burning anything? Greta aside, what if you just want to rely on something else? Possibly something renewable, abundant and free that doesn't require you adding wood to the fire every few hours or filling your propane tank. What happens when the gas or oil gets shut off? This video will explore several ideas on how to heat your house or structure without burning anything. The odds are, if you're currently heating your home today without fire, you're heating your home using some form of electric heating. There's baseboards, electric furnaces, even electrically heated floors as options to heat your home. But if you're adamant on not burning anything, you have to make sure your electric company isn't burning coal, oil, or propane to power your heating system. Where I live, the vast majority of electric power is created by hydro dams. No fire, just falling water creating electricity. Other utility companies utilize things like windmills and solar panel farms to power the grid. Nuclear power has no fire either, and many areas are completely powered by an atomic generating station nowadays. New technologies like thorium and the ever elusive fusion generators are coming down the pipeline at some point too all flameless electric power generation that can be used to heat without burning anything. Electric heat is the most common form of heating without fire used around the world today. It's safe, easy to use and quick to install. The biggest drawback is cost. Even in areas with cheap electricity, the cost to heat a home with electricity is usually one of the most expensive options. Convenience comes with a price tag. Let's look at some other options to heat without burning anything that are usually way more affordable. In today's world, if you're not using electric heat and you're heating without fire, the odds are you're heating your home with a geothermal heat pump. These are relatively new systems that take the heat from the ground, amplify it, and then use that heat to warm your home. They are efficient and affordable to operate, especially in larger homes needing a lot of heat. They require an excavator or a big drilling rig to get down into the ground deep enough to find the ambient year-round temperatures and run pipes through that so as to transfer that heat into your home through a system designed to extract that heat. And some areas are better for ground heat than others. If the ground doesn't provide enough heat, electricity is usually used in some way to make up the difference. Most systems need a boost, but a high heat geothermal system example would be Iceland. Most of the homes in Iceland are heated by hot water, warmed by the lava in the ground, which is close to the surface. There are water pipes running to every home and back to the central heating plant because of the relatively cheap heat available from the ground. But not everyone is sitting on top of a volcano or willing to relocate to one. Some say solar heating shouldn't be included in the list of ways to heat without fire. I mean, the sun is a big burning ball of fire, isn't it? Does the sun's distance from Earth exclude it from the list of fire-based heating sources? It's still burning. Well, if we're going to be strict and exclude burning as a potential heating source, then the sun can't be excluded. Wait, what? The sun isn't fire. Nope. The sun is not burning. You need oxygen to burn, and there's no oxygen in space. The sun is a fusion nuclear reactor, not a fireball. The flames you see are actually big bursts of plasma ejecting out into space, not fire. Just a lot of hot plasma that's a byproduct of the fusion reactions going on inside the sun. 
Most homes experience some degree of passive solar heating. Just having a south-facing window in the wintertime allows sunlight to penetrate your home and heat up most anything it touches. Just ask any dog on a cold winter day if this is a heat source. The amount of heat this can produce can be quite substantial. The only drawback being there's no heat when the sun isn't shining. So cloudy days don't work and winter solar times are much less than summertime, often only five to eight hours a day in many populated areas. But all things considered, new green buildings orient themselves so as to get as much solar gain as possible in the winter to reduce heating costs because this form of heating without fire does work, even if only used as supplemental heat. I've talked about solar thermal with an earth battery on this YouTube channel a few times. Solar thermal is basically collecting the heat from the sun during the summer and using that heat to warm your house in the winter. When people think about solar energy, they usually think about photovoltaic solar panels for electricity. But the sun gives off more than two times the amount of energy per square foot in heat. Solar thermal captures and collects that heat and uses an earth battery to store it. New developments like Drake Landing in Alberta, Canada are able to provide 100% of their heating energy from this kind of technology without burning anything. Although ancient, compost heating has made a bit of a resurgence in the last few decades. Put in simple terms, compost heating is the heat given off by rotting organic material. Ever put your hand in a pile of leaves that's been left for more than a week or two? That heat you feel is from the microorganisms digesting or composting the plant material. A fella out of France named Jean Pain realized this and pioneered technology to capture that heat from a large compost pile and bring it into your house for heating water and space heating. His research is quite remarkable. And what's more amazing is that there is actually more than two times the energy in a cord of wood composted than if you burnt it. Jean Peng cleaned up the idea of compost heating by making the pile outside. And by doing so, you don't need to have any of the issues associated with rotting in your house. Big piles of compost can actually provide stable heat in the 120 to 160 degree Fahrenheit range for over a year without burning anything. Something few people realize is body heat can be a viable heating source. I'm going to break body heat down into two parts. One is the heat radiating out from a body. The other is air exhaled, warmed by the internal organs of an animal. Most barns aren't heated for a reason. Animal bodies can give off a lot of heat. The barn itself exists mostly to break the wind. When you put a pile of bodies in a confined space, it heats up. The air exhaled is warmed by the internal temperatures of the animal's bodies. And that warmed up air accumulates and eventually heats everything up. It's not just animals either. It works with humans as well. A nightclub packed with patrons will often have to turn the air conditioning on in the middle of winter because the body heat and exhausted air from the patrons will heat the club up to the point of making everyone sweat from the heat. If using this concept to heat your home, keep in mind that the smaller the space, the better. It's a viable alternative heating source, especially for the new trend of tiny home living without burning anything. I know of three other kinds of heating, but I'm unaware of any practical home heating applications for them. The first is friction heat. Just rub your hands together fast to experience this kind of heat. It works. The second is chemical heating. An example would be the little hot pockets you can put in your winter gloves to warm them up for hours. The third would be radiation heat. And I'm not ready to use this just yet. All three don't burn anything to provide heat. If you know of any other heating sources that don't burn anything, please post in the comments below. I'd love to hear about other options not covered in this video. If you liked this video and videos like this, you can actually manipulate YouTube's algorithm by subscribing and hitting the bell. Smashing that like button doesn't hurt either. By subscribing and hitting the bell or hitting the like button, 
you tell YouTube these are the kind of videos you want more of and YouTube will suggest more videos like this for you to watch. So hit that subscribe button and the bell if you want to learn more on this kind of topic. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out my other videos. See you next time.